For the last five months, I've been re-watching the entire Breaking Badverse in preparation for the finale of Better Call Saul. Well, the finale has aired. I've made my way through the entire Breaking Badverse, and it's finally time to talk about El Camino. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much with that mind. Join me down below in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on El Camino. This is a spoiler review, so feel free to spoil away down below in the comment sections. Also, if you're unaware, I've been making my way through the entire Breaking Bad verse, watching, reviewing each of the seasons, and now this movie. You can check out all the other videos right up here. And if you are wondering, I will be finishing my review of... Breaking Bad Season 5, that will be the next video I'll be doing on this channel, but I didn't have enough time to film it and edit it today to get it posted today, so I decided to go with Elm Camino because this is a shorter video to make. With that said, let's get started. And to me, this has always felt like a good enough epilogue to Breaking Bad while never really feeling necessary. And what I mean by that is that after Breaking Bad ended, I never thought to myself like, man... That really felt incomplete. I wish I knew more about how Jesse got out of town. Man, how did he get out of town? I was never asking that question. It's kind of like a lot of times with prequels, my criticism of them is that they're answering questions that no one was asking with answers that aren't satisfying. And this is somewhat in that same category of this is an epilogue that's answering questions about what happened afterwards that I wasn't asking. Now, I don't think it's bad at all. I think it, it's good. It's nice to get a little bit more time with Jesse Pinkman. And especially because the last three episodes of Breaking Bad, Jesse is a passive member of the story. He's taken captive, so he's not making choices up until really the last few minutes of the finale where he can choose if he's going to kill Walter White, White or not, and then he chooses to drive off. But other than that, he has very little volition. So one of our two main characters in the show is left to being told what to do, when to do it. And so in a sense, that's not the most satisfying conclusion for that character. You don't get a lot of time with him to really feel like it's closing his journey out. So getting an epilogue where you give him choice, you give him his freedom back, allow him to close out his story on his terms, not based off of other people's actions and choices, there is something to that that's satisfying, that's nice to have, that closes it out, that puts the spotlight on him, not on Walter White, not on Walter closing out his stories, but let's see what was Jesse, was going on with Jesse when he was taken captive, and let's see kind of this final piece of him saying his goodbyes to these people that mattered to him. I do think there's something to that that, that has value, and... I think most importantly, when it comes to something like this, a long delayed sequel six years later as well, or like a prequel, as I talked about before, one of the most important things they can do is not screw up the, the, the canon. Don't undo something that I loved before in order to tell a little bit more, make a little bit more money or whatever. It, it doesn't in any way hurt it. Like, it's just like a, a nice little epilogue, but not a necessary epilogue, at least for me. And with the way the universe played out, I posted my ranking of all the Breaking Bad verse seasons plus this movie, and I did have this in last place. That is more a statement about the overall quality of the Breaking Bad verse that it's two of the best TV shows of all time, two of the best written TV shows of all time. So it's kind of competitive. <laughs> a lot of amazing, like the best television ever versus a movie that's like, yeah, that was a nice epilogue. Well, of course it's not going to score compare great to the best television ever in that regard that doesn't make it bad just feels like okay now i know all right i got to say goodbye and got to spend more time with him where he had freedom but was this a story that needed to be told was it a piece that was of the the breaking bad mythology that was missing and i would say no how did jesse get out of town I never was asking that question. In six years, I watched the Breaking Bad finale the day that it aired. I watched this as soon as it was dropped on Netflix. In those six years, I never asked the question, oh, man, how did he get out of town? If only I knew that. I mean, it was like, it would have been an A-plus finale. But because I didn't get an answer to that question, it's like an A-minus. No, no. 
I was never asking that question. So it's a story that just felt like, okay, yeah, it's nice to give Jesse his epilogue front and center. That's what this is for me. So there's a lot of great scenes. There's a lot of great uh, moments, cameos, reappearances, all this stuff. I like it. It's specifically a story I just don't think needed to be told. So what are some things that I thought that was really nice about it? Well, giving us a glimpse of what was his life like during that six months where he was held captive. And you have the, this little bit where it's him with Todd helping Todd out. And I felt this got a little bit fantastical where, hey, Jesse, I need your help with a little project. And he takes takes him to his apartment where his cleaning lady's dead. Like, we got to dispose of a body. And as a moment to give a spend a lot of time on Todd and under, like see a bunch of like creepiness with Todd and the interactions with Jesse, it's great. Does it feel a little bit fantastical that Todd is like, man, I just had to kill off my my cleaning lady because she saw the money? A, a bit. Like, it just feels... A, it's a show that obviously has lots of murder, lots of these big, gigantic things happening when it's just like casually Todd's a serial killer. I guess he's not a serial killer. Casually Todd's killing people close in his life. Feels like it's stretching things a bit much for me. But... Uh, I, doesn't really hurt it too much. It just always like even rewatching it was like, oh yeah, that feels a bit extreme to just have like a casual murder going on that's not doesn't tie into any grander plot or investigation or anything like that. He just killed her, had her body here and needed help getting rid of it. But it leads to just some really great Todd interactions. On the way home I was gonna get us some pizza. A couple large pies. Maybe a six-pack of beer. Of what? Jess Plemons does such a great job of playing this character in such a disarming fashion while doing horrific things. And trying to be friendly while he's forcing someone to that he keeps in a cage to dispose of a body. And he's behaving like they're buddies and friends... But like, this is the most obviously unfriendly thing you can do with someone. Yeah. Can you, person that I keep in a cage, can, um, that I'm, you're staying here doing what I say because I, because I'm threatening to kill a little kid that you, you love and I've already killed the girl that you love. Um, hey, can you help me dispose of a body of an innocent person that I killed while I'm joking around? I, I love the moment where he actually literally turns to him and is like, do you want to say any words? And you just see this face, like, like Pinkman's face, where he's like, are you kidding? I've never met her. Like, I, th- I, are you kidding me? You want me to say something? What would I even say? Um, stuff like that, that's just, that was great. And then um, you have this moment where Jesse gets the gun, and he could kill Todd, but he's such, like, a beaten down dog at this point in time that he can't do it. Where if he, if, like, us as the rational, and you, you play this out, that he could, he could kill Todd, grab the keys, Drop, j- dr- drive and pick up Brock, go to the police. Like, there's all these things that he could do to keep the kids safe from the ramifications of if he did this, but it, he's he's beaten down. He's an abuse victim that is submissive. That's, that's where he's at. He's in a moment where he has the power to escape. There's nothing Todd could do to stop it, but he can't. It's just like really powerful image for what was going on in that point in time. And then you kind of go into the part where he gets Todd's money and introduces some of these character, this character that helped build the rack cage system that he was in. And it's just kind of interesting to like think that there was a world of people that like there was a person that built that, like that fleshed out world. I enjoy those little details and all of it leading to, you know, Jesse's just a little bit short on the money and he's able to outmaneuver. Like he has nothing to lose. So he's able to outmaneuver this person that is not as like Jesse was a world-class meth cooker uh, until the day before where he was set free and has killed people. Like, this is a guy that is very high up in the world of having done shady things, and this guy's just trying to rip rip, him, rip someone off, and Jesse's able to outmaneuver him because he had nothing to lose, and this other guy does. So he doesn't get money, but not enough money to get out of town. So it all leads up to the situation where Jesse... They set up a scenario where it seems like Jesse's going to rob his parents. 
And then he, he he does, but he steals a gun. So I thought he was going to steal the money. Even rewatching it, I forgot how it played. But he steals a gun, and it's kind of nice. Like like he's still trying to kind of protect his parents' integrity in some of this, though he still kind of manipulates them a bit. Um, and he goes and he ends up getting an old western style shootout with the guys that robbed him earlier, with this nut job that he kind of wants to kill. And it's something satisfying. It gives you a little bit of action. You should like Jesse st- is getting his volition back, his strength back. Earlier, he couldn't shoot Todd, who's the person that so wronged him that would have set him free. Now he is free. He's, he's like not afraid to die anymore. Gets in an Old West shootout and kills a couple dudes that tried to take money from him. And so then you he, he, he kind of get that nice send off and he, he escapes. Um, just let some, there's some nice things in it, some enjoyable stuff. Finally gets out. And is free and starts that new life that he's kind of been trying to start since, like, season two. It finally happens. There's something satisfying in this. Get that journey where it's it's all him making the choices to get there. Another thing I kind of liked, or dug about it, is that this is also probably the thing that gives us the best perspective of the news coverage of what went down. There's little glimpses in the finale but you didn't spend a lot of time lingering on the news coverage. And El Camino really starts to play that out. Even kind of more so than we got what you got in the, the Gene timeline of Better Call Saul. You get this idea of how people perceived of Walter White, Pinkman, this meth enterprise. How big was it in comparison? Like, you really get the scope of it. I enjoyed those details. A few things strengthened some credibility. It was shot six years after Breaking Bad finale. They look very different. And it, you can, like, a 55-year-old uh, Brian Cranston versus 61-year-old, not a big deal. But Jesse Pinkman, when the show started, had very much had a, a youthfulness to him. He was in his 20s, late 20s, could pull off early 20s pretty well. But by the time he's in his late 30s, I don't remember his exact age, but he might have been like 40, 41 when he, when he shot this, he looked middle-aged. And whatever that is, like his facial structure sort of changed just enough that he did he no longer had that youthful look that he had original run. You also have to keep in mind in the timeline of the show, only two years have passed for Pinkman. So El Camino is taking place just two years after the first episode of Breaking Bad, and the actor Aaron Paul looks fifteen years older, <laughs> ten years older, whatever it is. Is it not fifteen? Ten years older, just fifteen years now. 10 years older at the time. He looks distinctly different. Likewise, no way around it. Jess Plemons gained a lot of weight. And he's playing scenes in a time frame where we've seen what he looked like at the beginning of the six months and after the six months. And in the middle, he, he looks very clearly like he's gained a, a lot of weight. Some of those things, like the, the Breaking Bad versus always kind of a, a demanded that you... Um, well, since Breaking Bad ended with Better Call Saul and El Camino expect like demanded that you suspend disbelief in regards to characters' ages. So it's part of this pill so you have, have to be able to swallow when it comes to um, the post-Breaking Bad side of things. Um, with Aaron Paul and Jess Plemons, I think it's where it has always kind of strained things the most because they looked so youthful when they did the original Breaking Bad run. So overall, I dig it. It works well enough. It's a nice epilogue. But of everything in the Breaking Bad verse, this to me is the least necessary. There's a bunch of things that are nice scenes. Getting Brian Cranston back for one more scene, especially after watching the finale of Breaking Bad, and then you, where he's that whole last season, he's such a different person from where he was at the beginning. And then you see this scene in El Camino, and he's still Walter White. The Heisenberg hasn't taken over. And so he's like, What have you thought about what you want to do next? And he's like having a nice, just friendly conversation, trying to be the teacher still to Jesse in certain ways. And that's not, like, by the time you get to season five, he's only working him. He's only manipulating people. And you're reminded, oh yeah, Walter White and Heisenberg have two different personalities and interact with people in two very different ways. So there's a lot of nice things in there. A lot of nice little touches, little cameos, returning characters. It's nice to see a little bit more with them. Just not a story that I think needed to be told. Doesn't mean you can't tell it. It's fine enough. I'm glad that it exists. But of all the things in Breaking Bad verse, this is the thing that is the the least interesting to me. Oh, one final thought. Also, um, because of when the story takes place, Jesse Pinkman is just so reserved. He's such a big, energetic personality 
But the nature of this story makes him very reserved. And so some of the fun of Jesse Pinkman is kind of missing, even though it's a movie all about Jesse Pinkman. Final thing, I just said final thing. I, I love at the beginning where, where, where Badger and Skinny Man, or Skinny Boy, are... Skinny, skip, blanket on his name. Um, Skinny Pete are just so protective of their friend and, like, willing to put themselves in harm's way to help their friend. I love that little bit. That was a nice little touch. Uh, so that's my take on it. Let me know what you thought down below. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Check out my other content right over there. And that final review in this whole series is coming very soon.